Today, I'm gonna build a working Lego rover, and then I'm gonna test it out in a Mars surface simulation to see if it can complete different challenges and make it all the way to the end. Starting with our level one rover. Welcome to Habitat 7, our research station here on Mars. As you can see, our level one rover has just the most basic capability of driving forwards and backwards, which is our first objective, to be able to drive through the sand-like substance on Mars surface, which is made up mainly of dark basalt. Our goal here is to design a vehicle that can easily navigate the surface of Mars to collect data. That way, our research team can learn more about the dangerous environment here on Mars so we can eventually expand and colonize. So now that we know our rover can drive through the Mars substrate, we'll need to upgrade it so we can move around this next obstacle. So we're gonna add a working steering system that makes all four outer wheels turn at once, just like NASA's Perseverance and Curiosity rovers. We're gonna take some minor inspiration. As you can see, for the base of this, I just built it using some plates and Technic bricks in the middle to kind of hold everything together. And then right now, each one of these legs is powered by a circuit cubes motor and circuit cubes are like off-brand Lego motors, but they're way better because they're super small and they're really strong, as you can see. So to make each one of these wheels turn, we actually need to create a mechanism with two motors to not only drive our wheel, but also allow it to turn like this. So we need to redesign the legs with that in mind. To achieve our steering motion, let's connect some Technic lift arms to this motor. And to do that, we can use a few of these little Technic half pins. Now we just gotta connect this to our wheel, but we also need a motor to go inside the wheel because that still needs to be turned. So now we gotta connect these two guys together. Okay, we can not only turn the wheel, but we can turn the wheel. <laughs> and that is gonna be some really sensitive turning. This is like almost omnidirectional. Now I just gotta build this up three more times and we can reconnect them to the body. All right, there we go. So as you can see, there are eight motors in play right now. We've got the front two, which control the steering on each front wheel. And then we have one for each of these tires in the front. And switching this around, we have the back steering and the back drive. And those are all wired to those Bluetooth boxes on the inside. We just gotta see if this thing will actually work. So you can see here, we have our steering. It actually works. The cool thing about this vehicle, since each wheel has its own motor, we can actually drive it like a tank. So we can steer by just putting one forward and one backwards like this and rotate in place. And since we just made it so that each one of those wheels can also rotate, we can strafe. So we can literally drive it sideways. So the goal here is to get through this obstacle course and kind of go around these rocks. Starting up, we want to go like this and strafe a little bit. Strafe a little bit more. And we'll kind of turn it like this. And then I'm going to go here and we're going to try and drive sideways. We got our wheels turned sideways there. Boom. Now let's see if we can strafe to the side a little bit here. He is not happy, I'll tell you that. Oh, because they're driving different directions. Yeah, they're definitely going different directions. Ah, I figured it out. I wasn't using the controller properly. We take both these sticks over this way. As you can see, we drive that way. If we go back this way, we strafe like that. This isn't complicated. Boom, we can drive sideways. We can drive the other sideways. And then if we sort of like turn it all the way around, man, this controller's complicated. Come on, we just gotta make it through these rocks. There we go. See if we can turn a little bit here. These wheels are kind of the best we could get that would work on sand. They're also from the official Lego Rover set, so you know they should technically work the best. Now let's see if we can rotate like this and keep driving. <laughs> there we go, there we go. All right, we did it. Whew. Now we can reset our simulation for the next objective. The objective for this level is to make it all the way across our table over this rough terrain. And for that, we're gonna need a much better suspension system because right now we don't even have one at all. So <laughs> for our suspension mechanism, I wanna build what's called a rocker bogey. So I've developed a little prototype here. And essentially, this will represent our vehicle. And then we have two sides here and each one of them is connected to a little ball joint, which we're going to connect to this linkage right here. And what this is gonna do is allow both of these to connect to each other and move in opposite motions. For example, when this one moves forward, the other one it moves backwards. And then to attach our six wheels to this, we're gonna need two different shapes. The first one is going to be the main shape, which is essentially this little obtuse angle here. And the next shape is going to be an L that we're gonna to connect to this on a pivot. So this one is free. And as you can see, we have three axles for wheels. So if we attach those, now when we set this down, you'll notice all three wheels touch the ground. So now if we just build the same thing on the other side of this, each wheel stays connected with the ground without needs of springs or shock absorbers or anything like that. And it just goes smoothly across. And notice as well that the base is staying completely level throughout this process. And this is the same mechanism that allows the Perseverance and Curiosity rovers to navigate the rough terrain on Mars. This is just a prototype though, so we need to actually build it onto our rover. Which means first we gotta disattach our current wheels. 
And after seeing the difference in steering and strafing in our last test, I've realized since we can rotate this perfectly in place without moving it, there's really no reason to have this extra motor on each wheel just to make it straight. But since we can just turn it like a tank and then go, basically the same thing. We just need to kind of copy this design and build two large linkages to hold our motors and wheels. First, let's just build up our shapes. I think something like this should work. This looks like it'll work. Now the important thing on this is having an axle that comes out that's attached to this firmly so that we can control the linkage on top. Aha, look at that. <laughs> when the song is just right. So I was trying to recreate this linkage mechanism in the rover, and I thought to myself, we're gonna have to remove a lot of panels in order to get those linkages in there. And then I realized, essentially what this is doing is just making it so that each of these axles is moving in complete opposite directions equally. And you know what else does that? A differential. So I built this little guy in here, which is literally a differential just utilizing three gears. That way when one of these turns, you can see it turns that center gear, turning the other one the opposite direction. And this thing actually works. As you can see, it keeps it more or less level. So now I'm just gonna use some metal axles to go across these and make them strong so there's no twisting. And one more thing I'm gonna do is just make these legs a little bit stronger. They're a little wobbly, and I think if we move that center of force onto the top of the wheels, well, using like these things we had before, that'll be a lot stronger. So I just gotta finish doing that, and this thing should be ready to test. Guys, by the way, we have Astroblot Ublot still available on our store if you wanna grab one of these. It's a little astronaut Ublot, and as you can see, he has a little space drill, a little pressure gauge on his arm. He's also got a pretty cool helmet that you can take off on the front like this. Astroblot comes as a kit with all the pieces you need to assemble him, and there's an instructional video where I show you how to put them together step by step. He's pretty cool, so if you wanna get one of these for yourself, link down in the description or ublot.com. All right, here we have our level three rover. As you can see, it already has better suspension than the last one because we added suspension. Now, let's see if this can make it all the way across. This might be kind of tough. Here we go. Oh, dude, look at that, it's going. <laughs> look at it. Yeah, it's definitely making it across. Look at that suspension, too. Uh-oh, we're getting buried. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Where's the hop? Now, to get out of that, I actually don't know what to do. All right, let's try that again. Here we go. There we go. Come on, you got this, right over that rock. Oh yeah, there we go. Get back on track now. Turn it a little bit. There we go. Come on, you can make it. Yeah, look at that. Cha-ching. Oh wait, turn off. <laughs> Dude, that was so cool watching it go over the hills. I'm gonna see if I can make it two more times just to be safe. Yeah, I don't know why I got buried in the sand that time. This is some pretty thick sand right here. Watch this. Dude, that suspension is so cool to watch. It just goes right over the rocks. <laughs> that is so sick, dude. And we can actually turn it by just moving one forward and one backwards, but wow. Oh yeah. Dude, it's staying so level too, till it hits the volcano. Here's one more thing to consider. This is a scale model, so the sand that it's actually getting stuck in is uh, at a larger scale than the actual real sand in real life. So when they build the, uh, the massive one based off this prototype, we shouldn't have that issue. I'm hoping. It does have its little quirks, but definitely a success with this suspension system. And the next objective for this guy is to be able to pick up samples and store them inside some sort of containment module. That way the team can collect items so they can get research data. Let's go to level four. So we're gonna need to build a robot arm. And the base of this is gonna be made out of worm gear assemblies. And what makes these worm gears so great is when you stick one, in this little box, and you stick a Lego gear in the top there. We've not only created a gear ratio, where you spin the input on the bottom and the top spins slowly, but we've also created a one-way gearbox, which means if we attach one section of our robot arm to this little red piece, and we spin the worm gear at the bottom, we can get really precise movements, but also we can't spin the top part of this to spin the worm gear, which means each section of our robot arm will be sturdy and you won't be able to push them. So if we take our little circuit cube motor and we put that on our worm gear, the top gear spins. And then we'll wanna connect that to the next section of the robot arm. So let's just connect these guys together. And the goal here is to make this guy as compact as possible. So then if we build one more of these with the same kind of deal, we should theoretically be able to attach our last piece of the arm like this. Okay, so when we turn this on, as you can see they both move and are turning just like that. Now if we build up one more of these little sections and connect it to this top guy, that means we should be able to have three axis of movement, which will help us for positioning to be able to pick stuff up. Boom, like that. Now we have the base for our robot arm. Check it out. Now we can move 
just like that. Before we can add this to the rover, we need to add two more things to this. The ability to make it rotate like this, so that'll add another axis of movement, and an opening and closing claw. To make it rotate, I think I'm just gonna use one of these pieces because it has a little gear on it, which means we can drive it. Check it out. Eh? Eh? So then we just gotta attach this guy to here and we can build the claw that's gonna actually pick stuff up. All right guys, so this is the robot arm design I have. And we have this motor on the front that we need to connect a gripper to. And I think this should be pretty simple. So since we have a motor at the front here, I'm gonna attach this little actuator. That way when we turn it on, it will actually open and close. Put in a few of these little pins here. And then I connected a few of these guys together to put on top of this, so we have two bars. Then we just need another linkage mechanism to make it so when we move the bottom bar, as you can see, it will close and open the claw, just like that. You can see we can open her all the way up there. And in theory, this guy should be pretty strong as well. Just grab that guy. It can pick stuff up. Actually, this is a pretty simplistic design and it's super lightweight, so I think we shouldn't have any issues with like the torque from the motors not being enough to move it. I'm just gonna add a few little details to this to make it look a little bit better and kind of cover up some of the electronics. Now, we just gotta figure out how to get this guy onto here, which means we're gonna have to redesign this case a little bit. There's just one more thing I've added into here and that is this containment system. And what makes this guy so unique is that we can actually rotate it and choose which side to drop our samples into. It just beats building the same thing and having the arm have to move from one to the other. But now that we got that done, we just have to test this guy out. All right, level four rover. So first off, we have the robot arm itself and this is controlled with five different levers. As you can see, we can move our robot arm side to side like that. We can also bring it down, which is perfect, let's go. And we can open and close our little grabber here to actually pick stuff up. The objective for this level is to collect samples of plant life and any minerals we find. So let's see, let's try and pick up this guy here. Bring it into place. We don't wanna go too far, but oh, about like there is good. <laughs> Literally right over it. There's no way we can screw this up, right? Now this robot arm is pretty cool, but it's actually really hard to use, so. I might be right on top of it, guys. Oh yeah, okay, so now I just gotta not screw this up. If I close it, aha, <laughs> we've picked it up. Little did you know, that took me 20 minutes. Seriously, this is really, really hard to activate. Look, there's all these levers, and they all do different things. <laughs> but we're gonna turn this guy all the way around, and then we can bring down this guy and put it right over our container. And then with the container, we can actually choose which side we wanted. It. That way we can put minerals in one side, and plants in the other. So we just rotate it like that, bring this guy down, just drop it in. Ha ha ha, look at that. Bring this guy back around, and we can collect the next one. We need to just turn on one of these. Nice. And then we can do this. Hopefully get over that rock. Wow, I'm amazed that that actually worked. Now let's collect this guy here. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> that was beautiful around here, nice. Okay, this is actually pretty fun. <laughs> Let's go over to this guy. So one thing I am noticing with this is it's a little finicky. It is a prototype, obviously, but if you get used to how to use it, you can get it pretty good. I just, I think the main issue I'm having with this rover so far is the control system is just the worst for this. Uh, so I'm kind of limited by software and hardware. Gosh dang it. <laughs> well, let's see if we can get it now. And now let's bring it up. Nice. Drop her in. Slightly too big. <laughs> yeah, we got it in. <laughs> okay. All right, so the robot arm actually works. Let's go. That's pretty cool. We've successfully completed objective number four. The objective for this level is to find and uncover a new specimen and then actually be able to take a picture of it to send it back to the lab. So we're gonna need to add a camera to our rover and also some sort of tool to be able to actually uncover these from the sand. So the first thing I wanna to add to this is a brush. And for that, I'm just gonna use this guy, which is just a little bristle brush. That should brush the sand away so we can get a good look at the fossil or specimen. And I was thinking about maybe like mounting this underneath or to a separate arm, but then I realized we have this fully articulatable robot arm right here and it already has a motor on the end. So we're just gonna create another attachment for this that we can connect our brush to. First, we just gotta connect this to an axle. So I think if we like clip it here, I'm thinking that may just fit right in the end like that. 
dude, look at that. Fits right in there. That should spin. That's actually really simple. And now all we have to do is just take off this guy and plug in our new module like this. And I also built one more of these that's a drill attachment and it works the same way. And they can just decide what they're gonna do before they send it out so they can attach this manually. I designed a system for that. <laughs> now to add a camera to the front of this. And for that, we're gonna use this guy. It's a very tiny button camera. The thing I wanna do with this though is make it so we're able to angle it up and down. And for that, I'm gonna use a worm gear. Cause worm gears are just great, okay? Check it out guys, I found this really old Lego magnet piece. And if we attach this to here, this should allow us to just snap on our camera using the built-in magnet. Ah, there we go. Now we just gotta mount this guy to the front of our rover and we'll be ready to test it out. Guys, before we test this next one, make sure you subscribe so you can become a member of the Brick Science Stud Army. That way you won't miss any of our future videos. Here we have our level five rover. We just added a few little things. So there's three specimens buried in the sand and we need to photograph and clean off each one of them. Once we do that, all we have to do is make it to the end so we can transmit the images and we can call this thing a success. As you can see, we can turn on our spinning brush and lower this guy down as soon as I remember how. Rotator into place. And now we just gotta clean this off. Let's see if this thing actually works. We just gotta be real gentle about it. We can almost tell what it is. Look at that guys, we've uncovered our first one. Now this thing isn't perfect, but it is working to actually uncover stuff. Now we just drive forward a little bit further, angle our camera down a little bit, and we can take a picture of this. And there we have our first one. Let's go to the second one over here as we run over our last fossil. <laughs> I'm gonna switch this out for the drill, see if we can get a little bit of a better digging action here. We'll see if this works. Hey, actually that uncovered it quite a bit better. <laughs> All right, there we go. Well, we can definitely see what it is better, so let's take a picture of this one. Now, we just have to uncover the third one. Come on. All right, there we go. This is a powerful brush, dude. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, that's one way to get it out. Let's see if we can just gently brush it off here. All right, well, we've got this one pretty much uncovered, so let's just grab a quick pick, see if we can make it to the end. Now all we gotta do is transmit those photos, and boom. Well, I'd say that's pretty successful. It just needs a few little tweaks, and this thing will be groundworthy. But that's it for this video, guys. We built a working LEGO Mars rover. Huge thanks for watching. This whole project took a ton of work, so if you enjoyed, consider subscribing. Check out one of these two videos popping up on your screen, and I'll talk to you in the next Brick Science. See ya.